This is my first time ever in South America. Why am I down here? Because the food scene in Peru is crazy. I've heard so much good stuff, so we came down to find out about it. We're in Lima, and you get here and you're like, what's not to love? This is the only South American city where the capital of the country is right on the beach. Like, that's Lima, that's the beach, those are surfers. I love this place already. So, we're gonna be here for the better part of a week. We're gonna visit Lima, go north to Cusco, kind of an ancient Inca area the high Sierras of the Andes. It's on the way to Machu Picchu. It's where you fly in. So a couple of days in Cusco, bunch of time in Lima, whole bunch of restaurants you're gonna visit. Peruvian cuisine is influenced by the Inca tribes, by the fact that you've got this coastline, you've got mountains, you've got a ton of microclimates, Japanese immigrants, Chinese immigrants, Spanish cuisine. I can't wait to eat my way through this place. I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. Been in the business my whole life and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all-natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites. From our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at cento.com. We're in the town of Cusco in Peru. We're up like 11, 12,000 feet. Everybody's short of breath, except me. Anyway, if you've ever been to Machu Picchu, you've been here, because this is where the train leaves from, that like five hour train ride up. Great old hilly town, and it's a Sunday, and we got a market to hit. And one of my favorite things when I'm traveling is to go to food markets. I've already toured this stall, and it's all kinds of stuff. I wish I knew what three quarters of it was. All kinds of corn, weird potatoes, butchers, and be prepared. Markets like this, there's no refrigeration. This is kind of the way it's done everywhere in the world. Some of the best chicken I've ever seen, pork, beef, fish, vegetables, corn, you name it. Sunday in Cusco, look at the market. You like head to tail butchery? My lady here, she does the head to tail butchery down here. Butcher in the market is Cusco. She's working with the big hatchet. Ooh. I guess beef or something. It's got teeth for chewing, brains here. Questo, come with Questo. Intestines. I don't want to know what that is. I don't want to know what that is. She knows what she's doing. Looks like whiting. I mean, it's exactly how we treat whiting in the States, exactly the bone structure. It's a fish that I love. We have it in Cape May, just dust it up. It's so easy to pull that bone out and pan fry it. What is this? This is a calamar. Like a huge squid? Calamar uh, Humboldt in Mexico. Uh-oh, hold on. God, that's from a squid? Woo! She speaks English, that's so cool. <laughs> Big corn. <laughs> I'm here with all of this, who's got this little stall here. He's got some dried stuff up top, he's got nuts, some kind of flowers, spices. All of this, come and say, come a question. Algae. Okay, he's got seaweed, he's got chocolates, it's kind of an odd mix. That looks remotely familiar. Yet another different kind. This stuff. And then these look like the dried version of the big ones we just saw. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six kinds of corn right here. And just thrown in for good measure with corn, chocolate, seaweed. We have some dried shrimp. Why not? Because why not?
first time I've been to Peru and I'm looking at these chickens, these are just unbelievably beautiful birds. Fresh slaughtered. I was here earlier today and they were boiling them and pulling the feathers off. So these were killed this morning. I mean, look at the color of these. There's just free range birds that are super yellow. Man, good chicken is so bloody good. And now I found out why, Peruvian chicken. I get the love up there. I get it, I get it, Peru. Lamb, beautiful. I can smell the lamb from you can smell the lanolin. This is where I wish I had cultural knowledge. Clearly, in any culture where you don't have a lot of refrigeration, you gotta figure out how to do it. So it's gotta it's got be salted, cured, and dried. New York. New York, New York, United States, Stati Uniti, Nueva York, Nueva York. <laughs> there she is, here she is, my star, she's back. I was saying, where's my lady? She was here before, she's on siesta. <laughs> Everybody's happy, they don't seem to need meds. <laughs> I've always wondered why so many Peruvian women wore European-style men's hats with brims. Well, it so happens that British railroad workers that were laying rail here in the 1920s wore these hats to shed water and protect them from the sun. Bowlers and fedoras, those were the hats of choice. Cross-cultural influence indeed. Ceviche is everywhere in Peru the country's signature dish, so to speak, and with a 1,500-mile coastline boasting some of the densest biomass of seafood anywhere on planet Earth, here they take the freshest raw fish, sliced thin or in chunks, doused with some acid like lemon or lime juice, fresh herbs, hot peppers, salt, and after a really brief marinade where the fish is partially cooked by the acid, it's on your plate and one of the best ways to enjoy great seafood I've had anywhere. Here's one version at Limo Cochina in Cusco but we'll see variations on this theme everywhere we go. Our first step will be to cut our fish in cubes, okay? I prefer to use sea bass in this case uh, because it's a good fish for me. Our next step will be to refresh our fish. For that, we will use three ice cubes. To use our limo chili in this case, we have to take out the vein and seeds because are very spicy. They're hot. Like a brunoa, cut. Now, we will use some cilantro leaves. How to add it? Our next step will be to add lime. And our next step will be to add red onion. Salt, okay? okay you can see here, our liquid became white. We call it tiger milk. All, all ceviche have the flavor in the tiger milk. We have to take out the ice cubes. Right. Okay. Here we have our fresh corn. We have many corn in the Circuit Valley. I noticed. And we have to use a sweet potato glaze. We'll finish our presentation with one cilantro leaf. He's onto something. This is great. It's really good. Thank I think we're going to be eating a lot of ceviche. The city of Cusco was once the capital of the Inca Empire. It's beautiful, ancient, and located in the Peruvian Andes. It's also the staging ground for any visit to Machu Picchu. It's teeming with really good restaurants, too. We're going to hit Map Cafe, Pachapapa, and Chicholina. Playing with mushrooms now. Yeah, it's a little ceviche of wild mushrooms. Right. Salt and pepper, um, chopped up rocoto, coriander. What's ricotto? Rocoto is the, like the bell pepper here. Oh, it's some pepper. Yeah. Putting celery in there as well, red onion. Peruvian's red onion is amazing. Ceviche in Peru, they always serve it with either glazed sweet potato. Avocado, palta, lemon. All right, so walk me through. So he did the avocado thing yeah. with the lemon. So he's going to put the avocado, lemon, and celery um, acid sauce on the top. Ceviche of mushrooms. I love it. That's really good. Super clean. The mushrooms are great. And they're local Mushroom. from the hills. Yeah, they're from near Saxoma. They're amazing. Holy mackerel. Oh, it looks like a little pig. This is an oven roasted guinea pig. The basis of the, the flavor is wakatai. And part of the presentation is, is for the client. And so there's a nice presentation. It's the whole guinea pig. This is lechon, or suckling pig. The pancheta is going to be cooked in two different um, steps or phases. The first part is boiling the pancheta in a mud, uh, like a clay pot. After that, it will be put in the wood oven, in the mud oven, to get it to Crisp, roast it and get, get it crispy. Yeah. This is the dried okay. potatoes. 
Yeah, these are crazy. Pica olla. Who knew? I never heard of dried potatoes. So mahal, which is like a rustic type of mashed potato. Milk, butter. It's familiar. Suckling pig is served with a salad, and also they will actually just give you mint leaves. It's good because with the altitude, it, it, it helps with the digestion. So we've brought the, the pork back out, and it is on a traditional terracotta roof tile. It's all the roofs of terracotta tile. All the roofs yeah. of terracotta tiles, and it's actually mandated that way so that you keep um, the view from above looking pretty. <laughs> That's one, I look at that thing, what am I looking at? That's not wood. That, I know that shape. Duh, it's a roof tile. All right. It's a big plate of food. So the meat's very tender now after the cooking process. So these are the traditional Indian herbs just ground into a fine powder and used to garnish the plate. Ooh, this looks delicious. It's going to be. Mmm, that's nice with the mint. Mm. Onion. Kapchi is a local dish, traditional to Cusco. And this particular dish, we do it using three different types of mushrooms. They're sautéed with onions, sauce that's based in yellow ahi, which is a type of Peruvian hot pepper, and then wakatai which is a Peruvian herb that is also traditional to the mountains. Beautiful. Queso paria, which is a traditional cheese actually from the Puno region. Fava beans. This is a rocoto, which looks like a sweet pepper, but is one of the spiciest. And a quail egg. It's a rather elaborate dish to pick up. So the puff pastry to give it the shape of a mushroom. Yeah, give it some shine. Quinoa negra. Black quinoa. Never knew there was such a thing. So we were looking at about 10 to 12 minutes in the oven. Damn, it smells really good. Safe? Okay. <laughs> he does you. Tambien? Tambien? Yes. All right. If I scream, cut. Mmm. Yum. Yum. That's really great. Peru. Ha! Who knew? When you think of the potato, how important it's been to so many cultures, like how many of your favorite foods, from French fries to hash browns to baked potatoes to pommes dauphinoise, to you name it, come from the potato. Well, the potato comes from Peru, and we're here in Chinchero, like 13,000 feet above sea level, and it's there, it's our spring, it's their fall, because they're south of the equator. It's contra-seasonal, so they're harvesting. Behind me is a family that's harvesting potatoes. Kids are out there, mom, probably grandma, three or four dogs running around, being dogs. They're cutting the tops off the potato plant. They're going to wait a couple of weeks, then they go down and get the potatoes. Uh -huh, they harvest just today. They start today. They start working today. And some fam, some neighbors uh, of this field are working together. They are helping to work here. No? This is how the indigenous call the Aini. No? Today you work for me, and tomorrow we are working for you. And this is how families have lived in this part of Peru for generations, subsistence farming. Get by year to year, potatoes, simple crops, sell the stuff in the city, make it by the winter and do it again. Amazing, but the birthplace of the potato is here in Peru. And to this day, to this day, it's still happening. What am I looking at? What are these beans? What are these called? Those beans we call tarwi, okay? The beans that are very popular here for people that are living in the Andes. So they just shuck these and they eat the beans inside? And the beans inside. For example, we have some quinoa, kiwicha, those are the <laughs> onion sorts, no? <laughs> yes, that they need to watch them a little more. They put on water, no? Yeah, that was so bitter. That was bitter, <laughs> bitter, bitter, bitter. Okay, I did it though. <laughs> so we'll see these in the market. See us in the market. Oh, she's making juice right here. Yes. No, no, gracias. No, no, no. Pretty healthy juice Very right there. Healthy. We've got pineapple, apple, banana, a little water. See, this whole thing's a juice bar. Both sides are juice bars. That's hysterical. 
Okay, we are now in this part of the market where you will see the medicine stuff. Herbal Look medicines. Look at the plants. Natural medicines. Natural medicines. No? Of course, we have some flowers, we have some plants, no? Taken when we are sick, no? They choose for you the different plants, no? And there's some. No? This is the chirimoya. Consider one of the most delicious fruits that we have here in Peru. It's so delicious. Really sweet. It's bloody delicious. Mm -hmm. We are now in the paradise of the of the bread here in Cusco. This is the biggest piece of bread that we call panchuta. Mm. Okay? It's really just a really loose crumb. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Very sweet. We go dipped in coffee or dipped in milk. In the milk and yeah. with the chocolate? Yeah. That is the best. I get it. So we mentioned this before, the potato originated in Peru. Originated and from Peru. There's 3,000 varieties. Well, a little more, maybe. I mean, this is different than this, is different than this, this is, is different, different than this. this. And you can just do a whole book on Peruvian potatoes. Yeah. Tienes café con leche? Yes. Café con leche? Si, sí, please. Uh -huh. Café con leche. No sleep last night. That is the milk, cow milk. Where's the cafe? No, She's coming. I, I see, see that. <laughs> Wow, that's good dark coffee. Mas. Mas? Poco mas. Consado. Okay. okay. Good lord. So this is this is, comes off the top of the milk. Comes from the so it's like yeah. the cream. Yes, yeah, like a cream, yeah. What's not to love, man? Sweet bread and butter. A big mug of good coffee. Ah. I needed this. Look at the look at the lechones. See? Uh -huh, it's all covered. They cover with a lot of things to keep it warm. Yeah. No? Oh yeah, little that baby is pig. The that is a big. Delicious. <laughs> look Very at her. good. So we're here with Mandy Kalitsis, who's been doing some translating for us. Thanks all much for that. You're and very then welcome. beyond your purview of translating in the kitchens, I said, you know so much about this place because you're like a certified tour leader. Or what's the term? I keep getting this wrong. I am a tour leader, so got it right. I, I'm from Canada, but I've been down here for over 11 years and I travel with groups, helping them out with logistics and giving them sort of background information on the country. So tell us about this place, because we kind of had an afternoon, a couple of hours to kill, and I thought, let's do something out of a kitchen that's kind of neat, that speaks to this high, what, high country, what's the name? This is the Highlands, Highlands. or the Sierra mm. um, of Peru. Awana Cancha is a community project um, started by people from the area and the idea is to help teach people about the Peruvian textile tradition. So it starts with the Andean camelids and then we'll move into an area where you can see women weaving and see how the natural dyes are made. Do you want to feed them? Do you want food? You want food, I think you have huh? to feed them. You can't come here and not oh, feed. It's a feeding zoo. <laughs> they don't want you to hold that thing. It's like, just give it to me. Now, these are llamas? These are llamas. Ah. They've got longer ears. Ah. Their tails are up. No, well, I was giving mine like Olive Garden portions. I was coming <laughs> in here. And they're, ah, thank you. Thanks, dude. Because no one ever makes it down to the end. No one ever makes it to the end, huh? Okay, so here we can see some of the different plants that grow locally that we use to dye. That's the beetle. They use that in food coloring. So it makes Campari red. I've had my share of that. Red as can be. And if you look at these two products, you can see the difference, the sort of shiny, brighter colors of the synthetic fibers and synthetic colors, and then the more matte finish, slightly more muted colors of the natural fibers and natural dyes. <laughs> Her brother's torturing her. Now we're heading south to Lima, a beautiful city with a surfable coastline and a red-hot culinary scene fueled by talented, homegrown chefs taking advantage of Peru's world-class ingredients. First stop, Restaurant Maido, run by native-born Peruvian Japanese chef Mitsuharu Tsumura. He's at the forefront of Nikkei cuisine, which is the fusion of Peruvian and Japanese cookery. It's like the perfect steak and potatoes dish, and it's that big, and it's fried. So you've got everything you want. Crunch, steak, potatoes, in one bite. Genius, chef. That's a pork belly. What's it's, the sauce, chef? It's a reduction of a ramen soup. We add a sofrito of onions, uh, a Peruvian pumpkin called loche, and a touch of um, soy sauce. And here's the magic. 
It's called leche de tigre, mm. tiger's milk. Mm. It's not actually tiger's milk. Right. Lemon, lime. We added some garlics. We have some kombu, you know, the seaweed. The ceviche mm. is basically the encounter of the ají, or chilies are native from Peru, and the lime that comes with the Spanish. Mm. So we have two continents here. We're gonna use local fishes. It's a dish that has been also modified by the Japanese. How has it changed over the years? Basically, uh, before the ceviche was uh, left in, lim in lime for uh, even overnight or at least uh, four to six hours right. until the fish became white. White, cooked, completely cooked, yes. gone. We have some mackerel here. You can see by that skin. Salt to the fish. Then, what do you have here? We're yeah, gonna add the scallops, scallops later. Yes, the scallops. Japanese uh, cooks said, you know what? Uh, I think we can we can change this. It's as like a sashimi. Mm. What's next? Soy sauce. Of course. And uh, have it as quick as possible in order to feel you know, the textures and the flavors. Let me see if it's okay. It's not that spicy. <laughs> Pinch of salt. And only this is gonna is going to make you happy, eh? Then you can eat it. Ah, that's good. That's good. I mean that's good already. Okay. We put the cancha mm. because it's all about textures also. Right. Right next to the ceviche, leche de tigre. And you have to eat it with a spoon. Because you need the juice. You need the, the marinade. Yeah, that's the way. Together with the onions and the cancha. Mm. Freaking brilliant. It's nice because you can see, you know, you see the sushi bar, you know, here. Uh, and uh, and it's a sashimi sushi ceviche bar. You know? Basically, what these are are, are, are uh, quail eggs injected with ponzu. So the sauce is inside, you know? How? We put that on top of an nigiri. How do you put the sauce inside? We grab a, an injection. A syringe? A syringe, yes. Freaking syringe. Yes. A syringe, like a medical syringe yes. with a little tiny hole yes. into the egg yolk. Into the egg Ponzu. Yes. Hi, servicio, por favor. Hello. Chef, what is this? That is uh, also outside, outside skirt. Grilled. Great piece of meat, right? Yeah. This Peruvian yellow pepper? Yes, sir. Chicharron? This is a rice cracker. Rice Actually. cracker? Yes. Try one. You make these in-house? Yep. Where'd you learn your craft, here? Actually, I actually started in the U.S. I went to a cooking school to Johnson & Wales. We call muchame. It's a pork muchame. It's a pork, I'm sorry, octopus. Cilantro, tomatoes. Yep, scallions. Scallions. Those are addictive. And after that, I decided to go to Japan instead of staying here. So I went to Japan, I went to Osaka, where my uh, grandparents and my family live. I went to, to learn Japanese cuisine. You've cooked this already, this is the confit. Yeah, it's a confit, we debone it, the, the whole guinea pig, and then we roll it and we freeze it. I pass it through the, the potato starch, I wanna fry it. While this is happening, I have here ahi. The pepper again. And garlic with ginger. And we're gonna add this sauce, which is Basically, vinegar, soy sauce, and sugar. Mm. So all these flavors come together. Okay, right here we have a yuca, with, together with onions, uh, garlic, and a little bit of celery. Mm. You can see. You can see how elastic it is. Yep, those starches you, you, are just pulled. You can, you, you can see it, right? I want to grab some mixed greens, some edible flowers. As you can see, it's already it's totally glazed now. It's already glazed. And Come on, baby. Tea. Come on, baby, come to Papa. One of the most successful global brands in this realm has got to be Nobu. Exactly. And Nobu is here. Yes. What, Nobu spent a good deal of time in Peru in his early days. It's amazing. As you said, you know, Nobu has been the ambassador yeah. of, uh, of this style of cuisine all over the world. We are very grateful for that, actually, you know, because that's the way people knew about Peru also. This is the pejesapo. You can see this, huh? Crushes anything it wants to. Shellfish, perfect. Mussels, clams, and this big suction thing, so it just sticks on the rocks. Tide goes in, and it can breathe air. Yep. So it can stay out of the water as long as it wants. Yeah, yeah. What a brilliant design of nature. This, this is that crazy fish, the suckery fish. That, that is fish. a crazy fish, that's the pejesapo, yes. So the pepper, both sides, okay. Some of the garlic, just wrap it here. Some of the Some oyster sauce. sauce, just a little bit. Yes, we're gonna do the egg whites first. And we go like this. And then we go to the fryer. We just 
There we go. Okay. Color changes. All set. So, we have the fish. Right here, we have a steamed bun. And you make these steamed buns? Yeah, we make them here. <laughs> you pour the lettuce some tartar sauce. Always goes there. It goes very well with fish, right? Oh, tartar I love, sauce. I, I'm a tartar sauce freak. It's okay, so then, very simple. You just put, we're gonna put a double for you. <laughs> this is a very typical Peruvian sauce. Onions, chilies, cilantro, salt, lime juice. This is our almost everyday sauce. We can eat it with everything. It's almost a ceviche if you, if, if right. you see it in a way. Right, you know? onion, chili, cilantro, lime juice. Yes, that's very, very Peruvian. Salsa, we call it salsa criolla. Then. More tartar sauce. More tartar because sauce. Because why not? Why not, huh? A lot of tartar Boom. sauce. <laughs> this is gonna be a messy bite, man. <laughs> I love it, like Chinese takeout. How about this one? I love okay. that. All right, g grab a beauty shot of that before I really make a mess of myself. Yeah, man. Well, I can't spin too much. This will be a 180. All right, chef. Somebody okay. has to do this. Somebody has to do this. This is not going to be pretty. This is actually inspired in a dish which was made by Italians and Japanese immigrants. You know, very poor people that had only bread and cheap fish. Mm -hmm. And they started making these sandwiches. Mm. And we have inspired this one, this steam bun, you know, in this typical Peruvian culture. I shake your hand. I've got this all over my hands. One of these, okay. one of these chef pumps. Thank you sure. so much. Okay, folks, we're out of time today, but stay tuned for our next show with lots more about the red hot food scene in Lima, Peru. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites. From our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at cento.com.